when you start the investigation. I find it to be the part that I enjoy absolutely the most. I'm very interested in this research and it makes me happy that other people are excited about the things that I'm excited about. It motivates me to continue asking questions that I'm interested in and studying fundamental physics. My job is my connection to nature. I don't have to go on vacation because that's where I go for work. I'm Netta Engelhardt and I worked at Princeton. Now I'm at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I've always been interested in science, but I can pinpoint the moment that I decided that I wanted to spend the rest of my life investigating the mysteries of the cosmos. This was when I was nine years old, and I read Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, and I thought it was the most remarkable work that I'd ever read. I study black holes, and more generally, I work towards developing a fundamental understanding of gravitational physics. Now, gravitational physics is very well described by the best theory that we have for it, which is Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now, general relativity states that mass curves space-time, so very massive objects result in very large curvature of space and time. And the geometry of space-time, that's what gravity really is. And it's been a tremendously successful theory in describing the cosmos at large. Now, on the flip side, we have a theory of very small matter, theory of very small scales, which is quantum mechanics, which has as well been incredibly successful at describing that phenomena. Of course, it doesn't immediately seem that there's a problem with having two different theories, one that describes large scales and another that describes small scales, but we do have phenomena that have overlap between the two theories. And this is what makes black holes so exciting. Recently, together with a number of collaborators, we were able to give a full explanation for the entropy of black holes. In the case of collapsing black holes, in the case of black holes that have always existed in a huge realm of regimes, which is far more encompassing than what has ever been able to be done. My name is Matt Yankowitz. I am a postdoctoral research scientist at Columbia University. I investigate the exotic behavior of a unique class of materials known as van der Waals materials. Graphene is the most famous example. It's a single sheet of carbon atoms, just one atomic layer thick. Although graphene is far too small to see with the naked eye, we can easily exfoliate graphene from a chunk of graphite using just scotch tape. We can also isolate many other materials this way and then stack them on top of one another to create new designer materials known as van der Waals heterostructures. The new experimental technique I developed is the ability to apply very high pressures to van der Waals materials and heterostructures. My research has a lot of potential avenues for realizing next generation quantum electronic devices. And another big avenue of research is using graphene or other two-dimensional materials as flexible, wearable electronics. Uh, because graphene is just a single atomic sheet, it conforms to the surface and it can bend and stretch. So you might imagine if we can make all of the components of a cell phone out of graphene, we may have a completely flexible system where we could roll the phone up like a pencil and store it more easily in our pocket. My name is Daria Akkainak. I'm a mechanical engineer and oceanographer at Princeton University. The field of underwater computer vision came into existence about 40 years ago when digital cameras became commercially available. And since then, the reconstruction of lost colors in underwater images has been a challenging and open problem. The field was using an equation that was derived for the atmosphere rather than for the ocean. Once I discovered that, I derived a new equation that was specifically for the ocean. To correct the colors, what you do is not Photoshop the image, is not enhance the image, but you remove the water from the image. Now, being able to remove water from underwater images means that we are going to be able to use extremely powerful computer vision and machine learning methods on large image sets that scientists collect of reefs or seafloor or fish stocks or animals. We're going to make more progress faster in marine science. That's going to help major discoveries in marine science, conservation, and of course, underwater computer vision. We learn a lot of skills and tools to become scientists, but we are never taught how to run a lab, how to make a budget, how to solve conflicts between people who work together. These are 
critical skills that we all should have, but then we learn as we go through the job. What motivates me to keep going in my research is always curiosity. Sometimes it is easy to lose sight of the bigger picture, frustrations of the day-to-day, -day, the trial and error, but taking a step back and remembering what it is that I'm trying to answer in the first place always gives an extra burst of motivation just to know that I am making my way towards answering this question that I've always wondered about.